The furry fandom is well known for being almost constantly plagued with drama from small and petty call-outs to serious and sometimes illegal scandals. It's a big fandom and while a lot of furries are just regular people who like drawing or writing about or heaven forbid dressing up as anthropomorphic animals, there's no denying that the fandom contains some truly wretched individuals. And these individuals came out in full force in September of 2015 at a long-running furry convention called Rainforest. Rainforest is known as one of the most disastrous and dangerous events in convention history with multiple drug overdoses, assaults, thefts, alcohol-induced medical emergencies, and property destruction so severe that con staff would be left to pay up to $100,000 in damages. But how on earth did a simple furry convention spiral so far out of control? Who was responsible and how did it get so bad? Well, today let's dive into the destruction and downfall of Rainforest 2015. Before we get into things, I'd just like to give a huge thank you to Likewise for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna be honest, whenever I use Netflix or Hulu or any other streaming service, I literally just scroll for like an hour and then I give up and watch the season 1 and 2 DVD box set of Seinfeld. But that's not a problem anymore thanks to Likewise. Likewise is a super cool and super free app where you can find recommendations for movies, TV shows, podcasts, and books. It uses a blend of smart technology and real recommendations from users to help you find TV shows and movies that you will thoroughly enjoy. One of my favorite things about Likewise is the Ask feature where you can ask other members of the Likewise community for specific recommendations. Take for instance Nache who's looking for cringy and awkward series and there are some really great recommendations in here. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Arrested Development, The Office, Malcolm in the Middle, Nathan for You, all kinds of good stuff. Those are some of my favorite shows. Any movie, TV show, book, or podcast on Likewise can be saved with a simple tap so you can come back to them later. You can also sort them into all kinds of lists, for example I have a list of the greatest movies and TV shows of all time that you should totally check out. This is my second time with Likewise as a sponsor and I'm honestly so stoked to be out of work with them again because I genuinely love Likewise. The community is super cool, the app is beautifully designed and intuitive and it's genuinely helped me find movies and TV shows to add to my watch list. So head on over to on.likewise.com slash izzies2 or head to the link in the description to download Likewise for free. Also follow me on the app at izzies and check out my lists. Thank you so much to Likewise for sponsoring this video and now let's get on with the story of Rainforest 2015. I think at this point it's safe to say that furries are one of the largest subcultures on the internet. Depictions of anthropomorphized animals have existed since basically art has and through artwork, cartoons and animation these human-like animals have grown to become well loved by many people. The movement officially formed in the 1970s in sci-fi and comic convention circles where it was very hush-hush and mostly relegated to private room parties or small meetups among friends. These anthropomorphic animal fans came to be known as furries and as their numbers grew it got to the point where room parties just wouldn't do it anymore and thus the furry convention was born. Nowadays there are furry conventions all across the globe from Den Fur to Midwest Fur Fest to oh my god we have one in New Zealand. Of course it's a furry camping trip, what even is this country? Anyway due to the sheer size of the fandom furry conventions are usually pretty popular and this is where the disaster of Rainforest 2015 comes in. Unlike other convention disasters like Lost Pegasus Unicorn or Dashcon, Rainforest was not a first time con and had actually been running for a about 9 years. The inaugural convention in 2007 had around 370 attendees but by 2015 the attendance had skyrocketed to over 2,500 people and it had made quite the name for itself within the community. And that name was not necessarily good, see Rainforest had quite the reputation within the fandom for being very lenient on more R-rated behaviour. It's well known that some members of the furry fandom are very openly into some pretty weird stuff but at most conventions there are very strong strict rules about what you can and can't wear and do on the convention floor. While Rainforest vaguely asked attendees to keep it PG-13 as children would be attending, they were super loose with these rules and so many furries came to see Rainforest as a yearly hotbed for wild partying and bad behaviour. So Rainforest 2015, the ninth Rainforest convention ever held, is set to go ahead over the weekend of September 24th to 27th and the theme is Swords and Sorcery. The convention is held in the Seattle Airport Hilton Hotel in Washington, also known as SeaTac 
back, a super prime location due to its proximity to both the airport and the light rail. Also, from my limited understanding of America, Washington is a pretty big state and conventions in densely populated areas tend to do well. With nearly 3,000 attendees scheduled to show up, Rainforest 2015 was going to be bigger, better and wilder than ever. Little did anyone know that this single event would mark the downfall, disgrace and ultimate cancellation of an event that had run for nine years. It was a weekend to remember, but not in the way that anyone hoped. Now usually I'd give a play-by-play -play of how the weekend escalated and all the things that happened on each individual day, but there were so many scandals and dramas and straight-up crimes that occurred that it's probably just easier if I give you a bullet point list. Vandalism was a huge issue at Rainforest, likely fueled by the huge amount of drugs and alcohol being passed around and the fact that staff had a tendency to let really bad behaviour slide. The hotel elevators became broken when furries repeatedly used their feet to kick the buttons, breaking them. Similarly, an elevator and a door cable was broken by someone trying to force the doors open. Someone loosened the screws on one of the hotel toilets, meaning that the next person who used it caused an, uh, malfunction that flooded the room, damaging the adjacent rooms and leaking down into the room below, which happened to be the basement where all the servers were located. According to the person who fell victim to this prank, they were basically thrown from the toilet by the force of the water and had to sit for five hours soaked in toilet water before a room was ready for them. Someone took all of the guest towels and threw them into a hot tub before stuffing multiple rolled up towels into the hot tub's pump, destroying it. On the 26th of September at 10.30am, the official Rainforest Twitter wrote, quote, Due to vandalism, the hot tub is closed the rest of the con. Sorry for the inconvenience. A plumber was called to the hotel at least twice over the weekend. The fire department was called to the hotel at least once. Furry stickers were put literally inside their urinals. Furries taped stickers and signs to their hotel doors, often depicting R-rated imagery or inappropriate insinuations. Food was left to rot in hallways and parking lots, with attendees simply tossing their scraps on the ground rather than using rubbish facilities. Staff wrote that multiple other people petty thefts and vandalisms took place over the weekend. Another huge problem at the convention was the use of drugs. Drug use was absolutely rampant at Rainforest 2015 and this posed a huge problem for staff, other attendees, the hotel and well, pretty much everyone involved. A smoke detector in one of the guest rooms was tampered with and discarded in a guest corridor, likely to allow the inhabitants to smoke. There are multiple photos of attendees using vapes, cigarettes, and even a whole ass hookah, so there's probably some merit to these claims. Some attendees hopped on Twitter to accuse others of tampering with the alarm in their room, causing them to quote, almost get banned for two years. Despite state laws, drugs were still forbidden both at the con and hotel for obvious reasons, though this didn't stop attendees and reportedly one security staff member from using. Over 2,000 spent nitrous oxide cartridges were found discarded in a guest corridor after a group checked out. It's estimated that at least two to three attendees caught selling drugs were arrested by police. Additionally, two attendees overdosed and had to be rushed to hospital for emergency treatment. Alcohol use was rampant at the convention too, with many attendees posting photos of their booze stash and showing up to the convention drunk and unruly. Attendees were supposedly given alcohol during panels, leading to at least one person being rushed to hospital with alcohol poisoning. Another huge problem and the thing that made Rainforest so infamous was the sheer amount of inappropriate behaviour and uh debauchery. Both because I don't want to be demonetized and because I don't want to talk about this stuff in detail, I've seen way too many images from this convention and I'm scarred for life, I'm not really going to get into it in too much detail. But regrettably, it wouldn't be a Rainforest video if I didn't mention furries in diapers. It turns out Rainforest had become the hottest and trendiest convention for quote-unquote baby furs who would, uh, how do I put this politely? They would, uh, excrete in diapers and uh, just openly walk around like that. Many attendees complained of the putrid smell that plagued the convention hallways while the diaper wearers took to Twitter to cry about congoers shaming them. Not only were these furries subjecting innocent bystanders to their filth, they were leaving bags of soiled diapers in hotel rooms, hallways, parking lots and even throwing them onto people's cars. There was also basically no enforcement of rules relating to appropriate attire so people wandered around in all kinds of very not safe for work clothing, or a uh, lack of clothing because there were also reports of public nudity. And these are only the instances we know about from tweets and photographs taken at the convention and the accounts of staff members. As the end of the convention approached, the Hilton began taping messages to the outside of hotel doors warning attendees that the hotel was going back to normal operating procedures. This was essentially the Hilton's way of saying, oh my god, Jesus Christ, please get the hell out of our hotel right now. It was safe to say that the convention was over and as thousands 
thousands of furries headed home leaving behind the tattered remains of the Hilton, the con staff were left in the wreckage to pick it all up. Now the actual number varies from source to source, but the bill for the damages caused over the weekend is estimated to be around $100,000 to $150,000. Yeah, pretty steep, but when you take into account a flooded bathroom and server room, broken hot tubs and elevators, trashed hotel rooms, multiple emergency service calls and garbage strewn throughout the hotel, that figure starts to make a lot more sense. But now we have to ask, why? Thousands of conventions take place all across the globe every year and surprisingly few devolve into drunken cesspools of chaos. So why on earth did this happen to Rainforest and what, or who, caused it? I've heard a lot of people say that Rainforest was a convention ruined by its attendees rather than its management. Most of these disastrous conventions like Lost Pegasus Unicorn or Dashcon were ruined by the sheer ineptitude and scamminess on the part of the organizers, but the blame lies solely on the attendees for Rainforest. And to be fair, I did just read you an enormous list of all the destruction and chaos that these furries caused at the convention, I don't blame you for blaming them. But I tend to disagree with this stance, and while the furries who trash the Hilton obviously have a lot to answer for, for the con staff had been enabling and encouraging bad behaviour at Rainforest for years. In a now deleted post-mortem on the convention, a staff and member of the Rainforest board committee wrote, quote, It's my opinion that what really killed Rainforest 2016 was Rainforest 2011 to 2015. During those years we failed to deal with problem behaviour as it started happening. We failed at every level of our organisation. We didn't work with our venue to discourage bad behaviour and we didn't create an environment where people who wanted to solve these problems were able to. As a result, damage to both the venue and to Rainforest reputation escalated yearly and by 2016 it had reached a point that I now believe was irreversibly broken. In 2011, the Rainforest board began noting that their post-con damage reports were significantly higher than average, though they were never billed for these damages so it was kind of just swept under the rug. This seemed to mark the beginning of the end as from 2011 onwards, the severity of the damages would continue to escalate as attendees were allowed to get away with increasingly bad behaviour. As the years went on and the damage bills continued to pile up, the hotel quickly began losing patience with the oblivious organisers. This post-mortem also reveals the disturbing stance that many of the organisers took on harassment. In 2014, a group of staff pushed for review and overhaul of the convention's harassment policies to make them more clear, strict and enforceable. Multiple board members pushed back, saying that stricter rules on harassment would quote, tie the hands of any future chair of Rainforest who wanted to work things out informally between people involved, and that they would be banning socially awkward individuals who didn't know better. Some board members just blatantly said that stricter rules would drive away attendees and cost their members so the rules were left vague and rarely enforced. Ironically and depressingly, multiple board members, both current and ex, were accused of harassment at Rainforest 2015. It wasn't just harassment policies that the staff refused to enforce though. Over the years Rainforest had gained a reputation for being a rambunctious party convention and that's because staff rarely, if ever, enforced any of the rules that they supposedly had in place. The head of the convention supposedly said one year that he had no intention of revoking a single badge and congoers who actively destroyed property, took illegal substances or made others uncomfortable were sent to their rooms to quote sleep it off. There were also reports of security letting people in without badges and even reports of security accepting bribes to let people in with the going rate being around $5. I can't actually find any sources on these claims of bribery though so definitely take that one with a grain of salt. Quote, other Cons have almost identical language regarding expected public dress and behaviour in their codes of conduct, but they don't seem to have the problems we did with people using the headless lounge as a petting zoo or having to summon the ambulance multiple times per con for drug overdoses. We had become a safe space to violate the rules because we had a long history demonstrating that there would be no consequences. By Sunday of the convention staff were well aware of how dire the situation was, so tensions were pretty high when they went to meet with the hotel management to arrange a contract for 2017 and 2018. Yeah, after all of the destruction and police involvement throughout the weekend, it was pretty bold of them to go back into that office and expect to sign another two-year contract with the hotel. The general manager of the hotel wouldn't even talk to them and the rest of the staff were, quote, barely civil. It was clear that the hotel had finally had enough of their shit and outright refused to sign another contract, though they didn't cancel the 2016 contract. There it was, that glimmer of hope that Rainforest 2016 could still go ahead. Now it was just a matter of getting everything organized overhauling the rules and the hotel cancelled. But both Rainforest and the hotel were bound by a legal contract. Surely they couldn't legally just quit like that, right? Okay, so let's start with why was the Rainforest board so quiet? So the Rainforest board was quiet because 
we got a letter from the hotel, and the hotel said, you guys are gonna send us a letter telling us you're canceling your event. And if you don't, we're gonna pretend like you did and charge you the cancellation fee, which was like uh, 100,000 or something like that. Don't remember the exact amount. 116,000. And then they said, and then we're gonna sue you for that amount of money. So they wanted us out. Yeah, the hotel literally blackmailed them into cancelling because they were so desperate not to have to deal with furries anymore. This posed a huge problem as the staff had issued a letter to attendees promising that they would clean up their act and be ready for a new and improved Rainforest 2016 at the Hilton. When the hotel forced them to cancel, they had to legally remove the hotel name from the Rainforest 2016 website, causing a firestorm on social media as attendees speculated the convention was cancelled. The organisers only made this worse by going completely silent and while some thought that they were trying to pull some sort of scam, in reality they were dealing with a crisis. A mysterious furry had emailed every convention centre, hotel and venue in the area warning them not to partner with Rainforest and rumour has it that the word furry was literally blacklisted at most venues after the disastrous weekend. The staff were frantically contacting venues and after being rejected from pretty much every single venue in Seattle, Tacoma and Bellevue, arguments broke out about what to do next. Staff finally broke their nearly three month silence when they announced to the public that they would be taking a vote to either move Rainforest to Spokane or cancel the convention altogether. Furries cried out in opposition, claiming that Spokane was too remote and also quote, a bit redneck and homophobic. Non-American, so can't really comment on that, but either way, people were really not happy. With thousands of angry attendees, a staff team that was being torn apart by disagreements and a statewide blacklist, Rainforest 2016 was green-lighted. Yeah, believe it or not, they actually managed to secure a contract in Spokane, and while it was less than ideal and actually caused multiple con staff to leave, it was something. On January 30th, the date and location of Rainforest 2016 was made public alongside photos of the venue which were posted to Twitter. Against all odds, they persevered. Rainforest 2 Electric Boogaloo was going ahead, and then, less than a day before, somebody sent an email to the hotel with enough of Rainforest past history laid out in excruciating detail that the general manager himself killed the contract and demanded we remove the name of his venue from our site, which is why I haven't named it here. I don't know who sent the letter. I don't know precisely what was in it. I only know that the letter came from a sufficiently credible source that the general manager of the hotel took it seriously, and I know its contents were specific and damning enough to flip the general manager from being willing to work with us despite an awareness of our issues to not wanting any association with us whatsoever. It's been speculated that the person who was hell-bent on sabotaging the convention at every turn was actually a bitter ex-staff member, and while the staff seemed to kind of imply that they knew who it was, there's never been enough evidence to definitively prove that it was anyone specific. Many people have blamed this mysterious saboteur for single-handedly ruining Rainforest with a few well-worded emails, but I think that the staff put it best. The real truth, though, is that one individual only had that kind of power because Rainforest had such an unstable history in the first place. Yes, a lone gunman pulled the trigger, but the board and the executive staff sold them five years worth of bullets. While years of poor management can be blamed for the implosion of Rainforest, it's important to note that none of this would have happened if guests had just acted appropriately. Ultimately, it was a toxic combination of disorganized and ignorant management, a rambunctious party and drug culture, and irresponsible, inappropriate, and downright freaking awful guests that spelled the end of Rainforest. While I do kind of feel bad for how hard some board members fought to make Rainforest a better convention for future years, it's probably for the best that it was put down for good. If you have any personal experience with Rainforest or any similar con experiences, definitely let me know. I always love seeing like the crazy stories that you guys have with these kind of events, so yeah, definitely let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that you enjoyed that topic. If you ever have any suggestions for things you want me to cover, definitely let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much to Likewise for sponsoring me. Definitely go check them out. They're really cool. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much to my Garfield Overlords over on Patreon. Sheriff Whiskey, Lady Cerebellum, Xavier Araujo, Grip Gunderson, Sophie Skitter, X17chan, Simon, Kendall Pachalik, Dozo Blint, Red Meth, The Furby Librarian, Sir Jalen III, Missy Pendragon, Moth Them, Astrium Vortex, Joe Bradshaw, Jordan Nielsen, John Leach, John o Charles Davy, Helm Hamburger Hand, Tyson, Gyro Gyro Brudito, Vampiric Misfit, Pom, Dana Home Gardener, Arcantilus, Jesse Chisholm, Kerbicon, Charlie B, Brianna Robinson, Boysenberry Switchblade, 
Finley and Agarafin. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!